Hello brothers and sisters Christ. I just want to do a quick video, quick follow up on I, even I only, see, I, even I only am left when we did that study. Um, so, some people think it's, I was a little too harsh on people when it came to committing suicide. Okay? Remember, you're bought with a price. You're not your own. So open your King James Bibles back to 1 Kings 19 because I want to go through some things where instead of just saying that no Bible-believing Christian would take their life, how do you get your life where you don't want to take your life? Okay. How many of us have been there where we despaired of life and death? And that's what that whole study was. I, even I only am left. You just start despairing of life and death. You don't want to do anything, even for the Lord, for yourself, the world. You're just, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to live. But you don't want to die either. Okay? You despise life and death. Okay? So let's read this real quick. And this story is a great story with um, Elijah. And there's key points in there that when you start feeling like this, when you feel like, you know, I just, I just want to die, Lord. I just want to die. What a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, brother or sister in Christ does. Okay? And Ahab told, chapter 19, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And he was doing the work of the Lord. I forgot to point out, this might, this might have some things sticking out. This is my dad's old hat. And I'm trying to, we're, we're, I'll do another video where I do an update video for the ministry and everything. But we're having storms and stuff coming through here. I've lost power off and on, so hopefully we keep the power going. So... Uh, I'm in right now. We lost power last night, so I was in this morning trying to get everything set up this morning for getting ready to lose power again, if we lose power. But God put it on my heart to put this out. So Elijah, he had slain all the prophets. Remember the story of Elijah, the offering. You had the priest of Baal offering. You have Elijah offering, you know, someone who's truly saved and believes in the one true God. Okay, now he wasn't present tense saved. But you know what I'm saying? Someone who seeks the salvation of the one true God. And then you have those that are uh, fakes, frauds, a counterfeit, the priests of Baal, worshiping false gods, plural. And the whole story is, you know, God accepted his offering. There was a sign for the Jewish people to see a, a wonder sign. And they took all the priests of Baal down to the water and killed them, slew them at the river. Verse 2, Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, gods, see they worship gods, plural. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow after this time. And when he had saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, now O Lord, take, my, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Okay. He had, I, I always teach this. I believe Elijah started losing a little bit of faith that God knew what he was doing, because God told him to do what he did, and then when he did it, this woman threatens his life. All now he's getting all scared, and he's, he's running for it. Now, I understand this woman has a lot of power, Jezebel, especially today in the world today, the Jezebel spirit is in the world today. And the feminism, the women of this world have a lot of power with Satan backing them. Right? I understand that. And some, sometimes we can get afraid of, of this world. Okay? We can start fearing what they can do to us. Okay? Verse 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Okay. One of the good ways of helping you keep a good, uh, healthy you know, spirit, uh, attitude, uh, not to always be um, depression. One of the things that helps depression is eating right. Eating right and making sure you I've gone through depression. I've gone through depression where you overeat where the flat, and you're eating bad food. But I've gone through depression where you don't hardly eat at all. Okay? When you're going through bad times, scary times, sometimes you don't eat. There's two responses to that. You overeat or you undereat. Here, he, he didn't eat enough. So he's like, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and crews of water in, in his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Okay? So real quick, I want to point this out. Eating right. 
eating just enough food, not too much food. You can eat too much food and that will increase your sorrows. That don't, why? Because when you eat too much food, and I've done it, and you start gaining weight, which I've gained weight this winter, I'll be losing it this summer hopefully, but you start gaining a lot of weight, you don't have enough energy. So that's another thing that adds to your depression. There's things you want to do, but you can't do them because you just don't have the energy because you're not eating right. You're not staying physically active and healthy, but you're not eating right. Um, you're overeating. And then I've talked to men that are really overweight, uh, brothers in Christ. One of the biggest regrets of, of being overweight is it's detrimental on your body. On your back is one of the big things is knees and back. Then you have pressures on your heart because you have too much fat. You guys know this stuff, but I'm saying it just adds to the sorrow. Okay, it doesn't help you. What helps, what I'm talking about is eating healthy food, the right amount of food, and staying physically active. So we see here he wanted to die. So what is it? Hey, you're not eating enough. Okay? Don't go without eating. You gotta eat. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again to the second the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too hard for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of the meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Now stop there. What was the second thing? First thing is, is you need to eat. Your physical body needs strength. When you're feeling like you want to give up, your physical body is always going to be attacking you and trying to be against you. But your body also needs food. And sometimes you can be simple. The simple depression can just simply be about you didn't eat. How long have you been without eating? Me, when I was younger, I had a high body metabolism. I was underweight. I did eat sometimes, but I, you know, everyone's always telling me, eat, eat, you need to eat, you need to eat. And I was eating, but it was body metabolism. Okay. But when I went without eating, I would start getting moody, I'd start getting the shakes, and I'd start getting upset, like, like depression, you know, just upset for no reason. You know, start getting negative. Right. Your body needs food, you need to take care of your body. Your body, the Bible says, your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. You're bought with a price. It's supposed to be without blemish. I know we use that to talk about sin, get sin out, absolutely. But you're also supposed to take care of that temple. Okay. You need energy. But the second thing he did is what? Once he you know, got some food, got his strength up, what did he do? He went to spend some time with who? Let's read that again. And he arose and did eat and drink and went into the strength of that meat, forty days and forty nights into Horeb, the mount of God. He went and spent some time with God. What's the second thing you can do if you start getting so depressed that you're, just, you're like, because I've been there, even as a saved sinner, a despairing of life and death. Go spend some time with God. Go out in nature. Uh, take, uh, I don't have it on me, but uh, a recording of the Bible. Take some good music that's not fleshly music, but wordless music that's peaceful, and you can sit there and you can pray and talk with God while you're listening to music. You can turn the music off and listen to God's music. You know, the nature, the sounds of nature, the wind blowing through the trees, the animals, the birds. All right? And pray and talk with the Lord. Go spend some time with God. When's the last time? When you start getting very depressed, very moody, uh, if you really look closely, you'll realize, hey, it's been a while since I've actually spent some serious time with God. Oh, a little bit here and there, but some serious time with God. When's the last time you spent some serious time? Right. Spend some time with God. Brothers and sisters Christ, get back into the Word of God. Make sure you're starting your day with the Word of God and you're ending your day with the Word of God. Make sure that you're praying. You start your day with prayer and ending your day with prayer. I always say this, but take some time to take a day out for rest from the world's trouble, what's going on in the world, and everything. Take some time out and make a big deal of going through the scriptures in a bigger capacity, not just starting it for like 10 minutes in the morning, which I do, 10 minutes in the evening, but take time out to listen to the Word of God during the day. Take some time out to do some Bible studies and talk with the Lord. Take a day off and, and, and make it a day of rest and make it a day of spending time with God. That's what Elijah did. And he came there, there into a cave and lodged there, and behold, the Word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. 
and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. See, he's distracted by the world. He needs to rest. He needs to eat right, make sure that his life is right. Remember, we talked about this with, in that study. You can go watch the study. I, even I, only left when it comes to the publican and the, and the Pharisee. The Pharisee was looking at everyone else. He wasn't looking at himself first. Now, don't get me wrong. Elijah has a job to do for the Lord, so he is looking at his people, and he has a love for his people. But when you get to the point where you despair of life and death, you need to turn around and start looking at yourself and say, Hey, if I'm wanting to die, I need to get my life right with the Lord, and I need to get my heart right with the Lord. Okay? Verse 11, he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passeth by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And the reason this, we're reading this again, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. What's going on here? You can get distracted by the world, and you can lose sight of God. Elijah was getting distracted by the world. The bad things that were going on, the people that were failing God. You know, you, right here, I can get distracted by the brethren that are failing and becoming part of the falling away. I can be distracted by this wicked world and what's going on in the world. You know, the so-called news ministries, uh, Christian news ministries, which there's no such thing. They get you distracted by the world and everything. And what happens is you lose sight of God. You lose sight of your walk with the Lord. Okay, because I don't want to go through all this because we did it in that study, but you get down a little bit further, it talks about where, what does God do when this is all done? He said, let's just keep going. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the center of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what doest thou there here, Elijah? Now, one thing is, is that I didn't mention last time is, is he asked him a second time. Why? Because the first time it just seems like I'm just I'm whining, I'm complaining. I'm just here to gossip, whine, complain, talk shows, you know, and everything. And he's like, are you actually seriously here to talk to me? Are you being sincere? Are you just whining? Notice what he does. He wraps his face. He gets in the right, you know, proper attitude before the Lord. It says, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Can you imagine the first time he says this? And said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. And for those children of Israel have forsaken thy commandments. And thrown down thine altars and slain the prophets with the sword. And I and I only, and I only am left. They seek my life to take it away. Like he's pointing at God saying, why are you allowing this to happen? You, you, you. And God had to set him straight. Verse 14, and then his attitude is, and he said, I am very jealous for the Lord of God, Lord, oh, Lord God. Of hosts, because of the children of Israel have forsaken thy commandments, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword, and I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Now he's coming to the Lord broke and saying, in an attitude I believe, it's more like, Lord, what do I do? First, instead of just complaining about it and whining about it and kind of, kind of pointing the finger at God, why are you allowing this to happen? This is your fault. You know, he didn't say that, but it's kind of like that. I think that attitude is there. That's, it's, I guess that's just what I, what I believe. And then the second time, he's actually humbled himself, and instead of coming to whine and complain, he's actually seeking God's help and what God thinks he should do. What should I do about this? And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And he goes down and tells him to do some other things. So the three steps to get out of depression for a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, make sure your life is right with God. Make sure your heart is right with God. The sin You're getting the sin out of your home. Your home's a Bible-believing, abstain from all appearance of evil, free home, Bible-believing, God-fearing home. You're eating right. You're sleeping right. Okay, taking care of this body and making sure that there's no sin and wickedness around to drag it down so depression can come in. I've seen brethren that get depressed because they don't take care of their home and their environment to make sure it's a Bible-believing, God-fearing environment. They start getting depressed. All right? That's the first step. 
The second step, you need to go spend some time with God. All right. I do believe if you're truly saved and born again, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. No Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman that truly loves God and truly believes the Scriptures is going to commit suicide. But I, but I might have pushed out that they don't even think about it. That's, that, I'm, I'm not saying that. I thought about it. If I did that, I was wrong in that past study. But I thought about it. Okay, There's times where you're going to get depressed and you're going to think about it. Brother says, Christ, it's hard in this life. First thing is you need to make sure your, your flesh and the surroundings of your flesh is right with God. And you're taking care of it. You're taking care of your home, where you live, you, you know. That's the first step. The second step is you need to go spend some serious time with God. In prayer, uh, in the Bible, in the Word of God, doing some studies, talk with Him, take your troubles to Him. But remember, remember your heart, the condition of your heart when you take those troubles to God. Make sure you're not going to just whine and complain. All right? Or to put blame. It's their fault. It's this person's fault. It's your fault, God. Why would you allow this man to treat me this way? Why would you let this man stab me in the back? Why would you let this person lie about me? Why would you let, you know, I, I let's go off my life. Why would you let my wife do the, what she did or my daughter do, you know, do what she did and then my daughter passing away and losing, and my wife, you know, choosing the world and and my mentor turning on me and stabbing me in the back and bear. Why would you let, why would you, 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 you? I come to the Lord with that attitude. That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong heart. Instead of come to the Lord and fall down before him and just say, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do. My heart is broken. I've been hurt by people, but Lord, I, I pray for him. I used to pray for them all the time. I still pray for my ex-wife. I still pray for my mentor, my daughter. She's either in heaven or hell right now. And I'm leaning toward, towards more of the latter. But I used to pray for her all the time. Pray for him. But you need to come to God with a good heart, a clean heart, and the proper attitude that this is with reverence. There's the word I'm looking for. I believe the first time Elijah went, it, there was no reverence. He was just, you know, kind of puffed up. How dare this? It didn't work. It didn't. I did this, and this is how I'm being treated, and blah, 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 blah. You know, no reverence for the Lord. Second time, I believe he had reverence. God had to humble him and remind him not to get distracted by everything around you, to focus on him. That's what the whole point is of spending time with the Lord, is so you can get back to being focused on him, not distracted by the world, not distracted by your flesh, not distracted by, because when bad things happen to you, you tend to focus on the bad things and you forget about all the good things. The Bible says we're supposed to give God thanks in all things, the good and the bad. You give Him thanks. You take it to God. When's the last time, just a side note, when's the last time, Brother Jesus Christ, you took something good to the Lord? Not just said, oh, thank you, Lord. I mean, seriously went to Him, sat down and talked with God and said, Lord, I thank you so much for what you've provided for me. I thank you, Lord, for what you've shown me in this book. I thank you for everything you've provided for me. I thank you for helping me get through those tough times and those hard times. When I thought I wasn't going to make it. That I was going to give up and, and just fall back, fall down, and become part of the falling away and, and, and go back to being like the world. How many times did you take it to the Lord and with reverence and earnestness, even the good times? Thank you, Lord. You give Him glory in all things and you give Him thanks in all things. And you come to them broken when you need to apologize and repent on something. Right? You need to take some time out with the Lord, one-on-one. -on -one. Like I said, a lot of you say, oh, I'm in the city. Uh, it wouldn't hurt for you to make a trip minimum once a month outside the city, even if it's a two-hour drive one way and a two-hour drive back, to take some time to go out, take a picnic. Go out there, spend some time with the Lord out in nature. Okay, cities have parks, but I know that today, parks, there's still a lot of wickedness and vexedness. You're going to be vexed. The best way you're going to do is going out in the boonies. Actually go out somewhere where you're, you're kind of away from people. If you're away from the city. It kind of helps you to feel like you're getting away from the world and spending some time with the Lord. It might be bad that you need to do it once a week. All right. It's worth it. Well, what about gas prices? It's money well spent. Going and spending some time with the Lord. It's money well spent. That was the second thing. 
Okay. Remember, first thing is the condition of your health physically and spiritually, making sure your home is a Bible living, God fearing home. Second thing is you need to take it to the Lord in prayer and spend some private time with the Lord, serious one on one time with the Lord. What was the third thing? God put him to work. What's the third thing you can do when you're getting depressed? Follow these steps. Next thing you do, uh, get some uh, gospel tracks. All right. Get some gospel tracks and go lay out, go for a trip to spend some time with the Lord also, but that trip that you take to go away somewhere, if you have to stop places, take, make sure you always have gospel tracks on you. That you can do the work of the Lord and lay some gospel tracks places. All right. Always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you. We learned that in Peter. Uh, 1 Peter, I think it is. It could be 2 Peter. Give an answer for the hope that is in you. In other words, uh, the other day, someone saw my car when I was in town yesterday. We had sun yesterday. We had sun after nonstop storms and, and wind and hail. And then we had a day where the sun came out. And then it's back to hardcore wind and hail and everything. Um, today, this morning, I woke up. It's kind of... I don't know, the sun might come out again, but that's just the way it is out here. One minute sun, when it, it's, it's just coming down on your heart. Next minute, it's sunny. Then next minute, it's coming down on your heart. Kind of like our lives as, as Christians today, our walk in this wicked world. One minute, we could have peace and joy, and the next minute, we're praying for that peace and joy because it's just, it just seems like everything's coming down on us. But I was in town, and the stickers on my car, one of the stickers is, is, if, is if you died tonight, would you be in heaven or hell? And I had a guy that was just so determined to go to hell that he looked at it and goes, oh, I'd be in hell. And I looked at him and said, do you realize you don't have to go to hell? Oh, I'm, I'm going to hell. I, I know I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. And I looked at him and said, but you don't have to go. And he looked at me and go, but it's a choice. And I looked at him and said, it is a choice. You can choose to go to heaven. You don't have to choose to go to hell. Well, I'm going to hell. I want to go to hell. And I, and I walked on. That was an open door. I hope I planted a seed. You don't have to go. But there are some people that are so determined to go. But the point is, brothers and Christ, have an open door. Get out there and do some work for the Lord. Do some gospel tracting. Uh, fellowship with some of the brethren. Help the brethren out. Encourage the brethren. Take some time to encourage the brethren. Do scripture. I always got to keep pointing this out to the brethren over and over. The best encouragement I, you can give me is through the scriptures. Okay, that you're praying for me, that you care about me, you love me as a brother in Christ. I'm not saying don't say those things. I'm saying the best encouragement you can give me, whether it has to do with being in ministry, just being a brother or sister in Christ, going through depression, going through bad things and having to deal with this world, whatever struggles I'm going through, the best encouragement you can give me is quoting scripture to me that applies to what I'm going through. Okay, encourage the brothers and sisters through the scriptures. That's doing the work of God. Okay, get out and do something for the Lord. Get back to working for the Lord. Get back to being focused on God. When you're actually doing work for the Lord, your eyes are focused on Jesus Christ. When you put work for, to the Lord to the side, when's the last time you gospel track? Oh, it's been a month. When's the last time you've talked to a brother or sister in Christ? Oh, it's been a month. Fellowship. Uh, responding to emails. I'm talking about me now. Responding to emails. Oh, it's been a couple months. I've just been just kind of isolating myself, not doing anything for the Lord or anything like that. Your depression is going to get worse and worse because now your eyes are on the world. Your eyes are on your problems. One of the ways to get your eyes off the world and your problems is to get back to working for the Lord. Doing something for Jesus Christ, which means doing something for the brethren. Doing something for the lost, for the lost world. I'm talking about preaching the gospel to them. Gospel tracting. Taking gospel tracts. Taking flyers. Okay? If you're blessed enough to be part of a house church, get involved really fully with all your heart in a house church if one's possible. Even if it's a house church of three or four brethren, get very active. To get the three or four of you can go out gospel tracting. Have a set date once a month where you guys go out gospel tracting. Okay? Uh, prayer days where you pray for the brethren. You know, get the prayer requests. And pre predominantly, I believe prayer is one-on-one -on -one between you and the Lord. It's not a group thing. It's one-on-one -on -one between the Lord. The only time it becomes a group thing, and we talked about this in the Bible, is when you're praying over food. I don't have any food here. When you're praying over your food... Okay, Jesus prayed out in the open when it came to food. He, he blessed the food. But people still asked him, how do we pray? 
They didn't know how to pray. Why? Because Jesus wasn't out there just praying. Okay, come on together. Everyone come together and bow your heads and we're going to pray. That wasn't Jesus. That wasn't how we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to pray one-on-one. -on -one. You need to go to God one-on-one -on -one and you need to make sure that your personal relationship with God through prayer and through His Word is strong. Okay? You need to pray. But you can come together and do prayer requests. You can come together and, and confess your faults one to another. But I'm just talking about the house church setting or fellowship with the brother in Christ. Talk with brethren. Be available for brethren. I had a brother in Christ. I haven't responded back yet, but he said he's there. If I need to talk to him. And I need to hit him up and say, I'd like to do some fellowship. All right? But Mrs. Christ, I just wanted to do this video because I just want to seem like I was leaving people hanging and just, you know, beating people. I don't believe a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman that's truly saved and born again is going to take their life. Why? Because their life doesn't belong to them. It belongs to Jesus Christ. My life belongs to Jesus Christ. If you're truly saved and born again, your life belongs to Jesus Christ. Not just life as far as taking your life, but the life that you live. Not just in death. God will take me when He sees fit. But I need to live for Him too. In life. My life belongs to Jesus Christ. Not me, myself, and I. Okay, not this world. Okay. <clears throat> so I just wanted to do a really quick follow-up on that just to kind of push that. Those three steps. Take care of your life physically and spiritually. Make sure you're taking a lot of time out one-on-one -on -one with the Lord every day. And sometimes you need to, like in the morning, start your day with the Word of God in prayer and the day with the Word of God in prayer. But sometimes you need to make, you know, say, okay, this month, this once a month, I'm going to make a trip where I'm going to go out and get away from it all. And I'm going to spend some serious time one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. And then get back to living for Him. Get back to making good changes in your life. If you need to still get bad things out or you're not doing some of the good things that God wants you to do. You need to start making good changes in your life and you need to start get busy living for the Lord and doing things for Him. Gospel tracting. Fellowship. Okay. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Real quick. I forgot to mention this. I'm going to upload a video, uh, another video that's an actual solid hour and a half video. Peter Ruckman, Come Before Winter. And it talks about getting work done for the Lord before it's too late. Okay, before it's too late, get busy living for the Lord now. If you're getting depressed and you realize you're not doing much for the Lord and you're not living for the Lord, get it fixed quick and get busy living for the Lord now. Okay, because when God calls us home, it's too late. Well, I want to earn that reward. I want to earn this reward. I want to do this for the Lord. I want to do that. I've always wanted to. When God calls us home, whether in life, the day of Christ, being caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble, in life, or we get caught up in death. Okay, it's your time to come home. When you get called home, it's too late. Things that you haven't finished, things you left unfinished, they're going to be remain unfinished. Things that you did that you shouldn't have done and you haven't repented on, they're going to still be there for you to answer for, at, I believe, at the judgment seat of Christ. Right? Now, I know some people are going to try to attack me because they always do, oh, I thought you don't believe in eternal security. I do believe in secure, eternal security. Sealed into the day of redemption. That has to do with the ultimate cost of sin. What's the ultimate cost of sin, brothers and sisters in Christ? Going to hell and then tossed to the lake of fire to be tormented by flames for all eternity. That guy that I was talking about, sorry to keep going a little bit, but that guy that I was talking about uh, uh, by the coast where he was talking about, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. I, I wish I'd have said this out loud because you know when you have a situation and then later down the road when I was when I was walking Declan on the ocean, on the beach, not on the ocean, on the beach, I was talking to the Lord about that whole encounter. I was talking with him and praying about it. And part of me wondered, it's like, you know what? I bet you that person doesn't actually believe that hell exists. He'll say, oh, I'm going to hell. He doesn't actually believe hell exists. One of Peter Ruckman's good studies that I like is the five surprises in hell. And the first surprise is this. It actually exists. I don't believe that person believes it actually exists. Because the people that say, I'm going to hell, and they're flipping about it, and they don't care, I'm going to hell, that's okay, I'm going to hell, I don't care, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. They don't actually believe hell exists, the real hell. Because if they actually believed that the real hell exists, they would not be so fl flipping about it. I'm going to hell. I don't care. I don't care. No. 
If they truly believe, they'd be like, hell is real, being tormented by flames for all eternity is real. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. How do I not go? I don't want to go to hell. That's someone who truly believes in hell, okay? But, sorry to go off a little bit on that, but yeah, it's just, brothers is Christ, we need to hurry up and get work done for the Lord. Keep Get busy living for the Lord. If you've fallen away, gotten into depression, get back to getting busy to serving God and living for Him. So I'll say it one more time. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, I'm saying all these things out of love for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? My love for you. And what's it in? Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next videos.